Welcome to the video lecture series of electronic devices. Today's topic is bipolar junction transistor operation. In the previous video lecture, I have discussed about what is bipolar junction transistor that is BJT, how many types of transistors are possible, what are the circuit symbols, how many modes of operations, how many configurations and the biasing methods. So all of these things, the basic introduction about the BJT I have given the in the previous video lecture. So in today's session, I will be telling you how BJT works, means how NPN transistor or PNP transistor actually work, its working principle. Let us begin. See bipolar junction transistor or bipolar transistor, it is a three terminal device. You know the three terminals are emitter, basin, collector and in the case of the transistor, current is because of the flow of both electrons and holes. That is why its name is bipolar. Since there are three terminals, emitter, base and collector, so let me tell you once again what is the function of each and every unit over here. See. Emitter, emitter is denoted by E and emitter is an outer region. It may be situated on any side of the transistor means either on the left or on right and the function of the emitter is to inject charge carriers into the base. Since emitter has to supply a large number of charge carriers, so it must be heavily doped, doping must be high. Second is the base. Base is the middle region of the transistor and base is relatively thin means or you can say it must be very thin and lightly doped and the function of this region is to pass all the charge carriers whether uh, the charge carriers are electrons or holes to onto the collector. The third terminal is known as a collector it is denoted by C and it is also other outer region means one side emitter outer one and the other side is collector being situated and the doping of collector must be in between the heavy doping of emitter and light doping of base and the function of the collector is to collect charge carriers and the collector reason is actually physically larger than the emitter reason. So, so the area of collector must be high. This is the case of the NPN transistor. So, emitter and collectors are on the outer side made from n-type semiconductors. P is the base, the reason is slightly doped. This is the circuit symbol for the NPN transistor. You can see in this case, arrow is outward. We have discussed in detail. This is the symbolic representation of the PNP transistor. You can see emitter and collector are made from the p-type semiconductors. Base is from the n-type and base is very thin. And here this arrow is the inward. So this is the symbolic representation for PNP transistor. This is how you can represent it. Now let us discuss the NPN transistor operation. See in case of NPN transistor you know that the emitter and collectors are made from the N. This is N. This is P. This is N. If let us say this is emitter, P is the base terminal and N is the collector terminal. So what will happen over here, you must remember this, the base emitter junction must be forward bias. It means this base emitter. Let us connect a current limiting register over here. This is the current limiting register. And since this must be the forward bias, so this is connected with the negative terminal of the battery and base is connected with the positive. This is how we can represent over here. And negative, positive, this is V, E, E. And let us say this is RE resistance and this is the limiting current, current limiting register. Similarly, here 
one current limiting resistor and this junction must be reverse bias. So, N is connected with the positive terminal and P is connected with the negative terminal. So, this is how negative, positive, this is V, C, C. This is the base terminal, this is ammeter and this is collector. This is also the current limiting register. Let us denote it by RC. Now, what will happen over here when you join, when you make a NPN transistor, means P layer is sandwiched in between two layers and you must remember that ammeter base junction must be forward bias. Let me write it over here. Ammeter base junction must be forward bias and collector base junction must be reverse bias. Now, you can observe the width of depletion reason for base ammeter junction. This will be very small because this is forward bias. So, here the width is very small. At this side, N is over here donor atoms and on the P side, acceptor atoms will be accumulated over here. So, this is how donor and acceptor because this junction is forward bias. So, depletion reason width is small. But depletion reason at collector base junction will be large because this now here it is. Uh, let me erase this. Yes. Now this junction is reverse bias and in the case of reverse bias the depletion layer width will be large over here. Here in the P side acceptor atoms and on N side donor atoms will be accumulated over here. Just the principal basic concept which we have discussed in the case of the PN junction diode, how depletion layer is being formed, how potential barrier is developed across the junction. So, the whole fundamental is same. So, it means here in this, this is the depletion reason at this particular junction at the ammeter base and this is the depletion layer width at the base collector reason. So, here you must note down how this se overall sequence of operation is being carried out. See, electrons which are the majority charge carriers in n-type semiconductor, here are electrons are the majority charge carriers and some of holes will exist. See, holes are in the minorities. So, these electrons will start flowing towards the p-type base, means these electrons will move towards the p-type. Now, electrons which are moving from emitter to base, there are certain possibility that some of the electrons recombine with the holes present in the base because base is made with P-type semiconductor and in case of P-type semiconductor, the majority charge carriers are holes. So, some of the electrons will recombine with the holes present over there but this base reason, this is very thin. This base reason is very thin and lightly doped. So, the number of holes will be less. It means out of the total injected electrons, some will recombine and the remaining will pass on from this particular junction and because of this recombination, it will constitute a current which is known as a base current. And this base current flows due to recombination of the electrons and holes. This is because of the recombination of electrons and holes. And the base current is very small in comparison to the ammeter current. Base current IB, this is very small in comparison to the ammeter current. Here you must remember that it is usually 2% of the total emitter current. Usually 2% of emitter current. You must remember this point base current is a small over here. And now what will happen? 
some of the electrons will diffuse through the base and some will be out from the base connection it means remaining na large number of electrons will pass through the depletion layer region of common base junction and they will pass through the collector region to the positive end of the external power supply which is being shown as the vcc it means here collector current which is denoted by ic this will be much larger than the base current emit sorry collector current will be much larger than the base current so this is how you can explain over here and in this particular diagram you can show this is nothing but the base current this is how see here all the electrons will be accumulated this is how the electrons are moving it means this is the direction of movement of electrons means electron collector current which is denoted by ic and this is the direction of movement of emitter current which is denoted by i e and you can draw the direction of conventional flow of current this arrow this arrow is shown for the direction of conventional flow of current see electrons are moving they are coming out from the collector terminal towards the positive terminal of vcc and it means direction of conventional flow of current will be opposite to the direction of movement of the electron so it would be from this positive terminal of the battery towards the collector terminal and here in this particular case you can observe that the emitter current this is the sum of the base current and the collector current so what is ie ie can be written as a sum of ib plus ic where ib is the base current ic is the collector current so you must remember it over here and uh, just few of the points that the base current is less than emitter current while collector current is very very high in comparison to the base current so this is how you can explain the working of the npn transistor moving ahead let us discuss about the pnp transistor see pnp transistor behaves exactly in the same way as the npn device as the npn transistor the only difference is the majority charge carriers are holes in pnp transistor while majority charge carriers are electrons in npn transistor so let us draw the diagram by which we can explain its working so here emitter and collector will be made from the p type semiconductor and the base terminal which is made from n type semiconductor it will be a sandwich between the two pi p types see this is the pnp transistor which has been shown over here and you can see here positive terminal of p is connected means p type semiconductor is connected to the positive terminal of the battery and n type semiconductor is connected to the negative terminal of the battery means this junction which is the emitter base junction this junction is emitter base junction so here this particular junction is what this is connected in this particular manner similarly here collector terminal which is made from p type it is connected with the negative terminal of the battery and n is connected with the positive this particular junction is the collector base junction out of these two one is forward biased and the other is the reverse bias you can observe over here in p type holes are the majority charge carriers when it is connected with the positive terminal of the battery it means holes are having the positive charges so they will be uh, like repelled from this terminal and holes will move towards the base it means what is the function of the emitter the function of the emitter is holes emitting means holes are emitted from over here and the collector at the collector this holes will be collected over here so it means at this point holes will be 
collected at this particular point holes will be collected and electrons are in the minorities similarly when this collector base junction this is connected in such a manner that here this outer terminal collector is connected with the negative terminal means holes will be attracted towards this negative terminal of the battery and this is how you can represent the direction of flow of collector current ic is what it will be moving out ib is the base current which is because of the recombination only so what will happen over here current conduction within pnp transistor it takes place because of holes conduction and holes are moving from emitter to collector that is majority charge carriers they are participating over here and the conduction in external circuit is carried out by the electrons the collector current here which is slightly less than the emitter current see collector current ic which will be less than the emitter current and this is due to the fact that 2 to 5% of holes are lost in the recombination with the electrons in b region 2 to 5% of holes are lost actually therefore collector current is slightly less than the emitter current and the collector current it is a function of emitter current that is with the increase or decrease in the emitter current correspondingly change in collector current can be observed over here and here also you can see the direction of conventional current this is shown means it is moving out from the collector terminal because uh, like as all the currents have been shown over here ie ib and ic so here in the, this particular case also you can write down what is emitter current you can write down that the emitter current which is denoted by ie it would be the sum of base current plus collector current so this is how you can explain the operation of the pnp transistor where the majority charge carriers are holes and here you must remember that emitter base junction must be forward biased and same as the case of the npn transistor here also forward biasing the emitter base junction means this it controls the collector and emitter current and since you know that the, this base current ib this is very very small because of the very thin doping as well it means ib can also be ignored so when ib can be neglected then we can write down the emitter current is almost equal to the collector current so this is how you must be aware with all these kinds of approximations whenever you have to do certain numerical questions and all you must remember it topic for the next video lecture is transistor as an amplifier thank you so much for watching this video